Hello everyone. Students of MES Wagar High School are connecting around the world with Skype in the classroom. This time students had a virtual trip to Miami Zoo. This virtual field trip was about one of the longest migrations of any insect on earth. Each year millions of monarch butterflies leave their summer homes in southern Canada and the northeastern United States and journey thousands of miles to a small mountainous area in central Mexico to a place they have never been before but where their great great grandparents began an epic journey. So, students got to know why do they do this and how do they find this sanctuary hidden high in the transvolcanic belt. Never mind if you couldn't attend this virtual field trip. Just watch this full video and you will get to know why these monarch butterflies migrate so long. Some of our students are giving their feedback about yesterday's virtual field trip. Hi, my name is Prathamesh Vilaskarna. We had a virtual trip with Skype in the classroom and Microsoft Education. We learned so much about monarch butterfly which has the longest migration of any insect on the earth. Monarch butterflies lay their eggs under milkweed leaves. They only eat milkweed leaves. They eat almost constantly. The North America eastern population migrates to central Mexico. Millions of monarchs fly up to 4000 km to get there. In August or November, monarchs born in the fall migrate to Mexico. They spend the winter in Mexico. In March, they migrate north in the spring. In April, the females lay eggs in the south southern United States. It takes approximately one month for their children to develop. In May or June, the children migrate north and spread throughout their range. Monarchs live two to five weeks in the summer. Each female lays hundred of eggs and die. Two to three generations of monarchs are produced in the summer. In August, it falls and the cycle continues. A variety of threats faced by the monarchs, including logging in Mexico, agriculture, habitat loss, use of herbicides, and climate change. Herbicide use the decreasing the availability of their primary food source, the milkweed plant. In Mexico, the people believe that the spirit of dead people comes in form of butterfly, and they celebrate like a festival. Thanks to Besser and Zoom Miami, sir. Thank you. Hello, I am Shitija. I am sharing my experience about a study trip. This trip was very nice and informative. The I enjoyed this trip. The butterfly butterfly we provide into one of the longest migration of any insects on earth. Journey thousand of miles. To a small mountains area in control Mexico. To a place they have never been before. It is one of nature's greatest. Thank you. Hi, my name is Prathamesh Vilaskarla. We had a virtual trip with Skype in the classroom and Microsoft Education. We learned so much about monarch butterfly, which has the longest migration of any insect on the earth. Monarch butterflies lay their eggs under milkweed leaves. They only eat milkweed leaves. They eat almost constantly. The North America eastern population migrates to central Mexico. Millions of monarchs fly up to 4000 km to get there. In August or November, monarchs born in the fall migrate to Mexico. They spend the winter in Mexico. In March, they migrate north in the spring. In April, the females lay eggs in the south southern United States. It takes approximately one month for their children to develop. In May or June, the children migrate north and spread throughout their range. Monarchs live two to five weeks in the summer. Each female lays hundred of eggs and die. Two to three generations of monarchs are produced in the summer. In August, it falls and the cycle continues. A variety of threats faced by the monarchs, including logging in Mexico, agriculture, habitat loss, 
use of herbicides and climate change herbicide use the decreasing the availability of their primary food source the milkweed plant in mexico the people believe that the spirit of dead people comes in form of butterfly and they celebrate like a festival thanks to besser and zoomiami sir thank you hello i am shirvan i am going to share my feedback about our yesterday's virtual trip yesterday we learned some information about monarch butterfly this lovely orange black and white creature do absolutely incredible things found in north central and south america and a few other in the world the monarch butterfly start life by being born on the midwin leaf they quickly fatten up to become colorful caterpillars and is not long till they start a incredible transformation from pupa into something really rather magical they come on the smattering ready for take off in only a matter of hours the monarch is ready to fly from baby egg to butterfly in just around a month it's one of the most startling transformation from of the whole animal kingdom the monarch butterfly can travel thousands of miles thank you for tobesa for arranging this trip and thank you for skype in the class hello i am tanvi i am going to tell you about yesterday's virtual trip this trip was very very beautiful millions of monarch butterflies live there summer homes in southern canada and the northwest united state and journey thousand of miles to a small mountain area in central mexico it is one of the nature's greatest spectacle thank you and i think this is just a beautiful insect but when you hear about this particular butterfly the monarch butterfly the eastern population here in the united states this is going to blow you away it's absolutely amazing what the butterfly can do you know we talk about uh insects and you know butterflies are many many different species there's probably close to 20,000 species of butterflies so there's a lot of them here in the United North America there's probably about oh 750 to 800 different species of butterflies and they range in size from the tiny little skipper that less than an inch in size to the beautiful bird wing in Queensland where well, uh, New Guinea which is almost a foot wide just an incredible butterfly so you have a big variety you know we have a lot of different kinds of moths too people wonder how you tell the difference between moths and butterflies one of the big ways is the wings when butterflies and there's always exceptions but generally speaking when butterflies close their wings they close them in a resting position over their bodies kind of like this right moths will kind of have their wings draped over their bodies and their bodies tend to be very fat the moth bodies tend to be very fat or as butterfly bodies tend to be really skinny okay and the other thing is the antenna if you look at the antenna of butterflies they tend to be thin with a bump at the end Moths will have antennae that actually are very thick and sometimes they have like little feathers on them too. So, a lot of people say well moths are active at night and butterflies are active in the daytime. That's generally true, but there are exceptions to that. But today, we're going to talk about a particular butterfly, the monarch butterfly. So, what I'm going to do now is we're going to have these images come up on screen to talk to you about this incredible butterfly and to see uh, you're going to look at it and you're going to see, wow, this looks very familiar to what I see maybe here in my own country because monarchs are one of the most globally uh distributed butterflies in the world. So, let's see here. I'm going to go here and I think we got on the share screen here. We're good to go. Okay. So, oh, no. No, no I'll keep on talking. So, so what we're going to do is we've got the butterflies and these monarchs on the eastern yeah. she's saying no, 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 no. <laughs> Anyway, I want to show you some incredible images of these butterflies and give you the facts about them that are really going to blow you away because people don't realize yeah, share screen. Yeah, I, 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 I did. Like oh, there it is again. Oh, here it is. Open share. There it is. Got it now. Okay, boom, man. We got Okay, we got the butterfly. Now, look at this beautiful animal. Many people look at this animal and they think, "Geez, what kind of butterfly is that? Is the monarch found around the world from Australia to Europe, here of course in the United States too?" And many people wonder, "How do you tell the difference between a male and a female monarch butterfly?" And one of the things you have to do is you have to look closely at their wings. And at the bottom of the wings, you see those thin veins down there? This is a male butterfly. He's got those two little dots on each side of his abdomen. Those two little dots tell you that it is a male. You look at him closely like that. If you look a little closer at a female, she has these thicker veins and you don't see the little dots on those veins. That's the female. Now, 
The story about the monarch in Mexico is one that goes back many, many generations. In Mexico, there's a holiday. It's called the Day of the Dead. It's kind of like the Halloween here in the United States. It's celebrated November 2nd, right around that day. And the reason why it's celebrated it's kind of like a Halloween is because they call it the Day of the Dead. Here in the United States, we always talk about animals being, you know, um, um, scary costumes and scary stuff for Halloween. But in Mexico, it's not. The Day of the Dead celebrates the monarchs. Why? Because every year, right around November 2nd, millions of monarchs show up in Mexico. And the Day of the Dead is this celebration that the Mexicans have where they celebrate the monarchs. Why are they celebrating the monarchs? Because they believe that these monarch butterflies that come by the millions every year around this time are the spirits of their long lost ancestors. So the Day of the Dead is a holiday that doesn't surprise, it doesn't celebrate scary things. It celebrates beautiful things. The spirits of the ancestors of their families coming back to Mexico to make sure that the families are doing well, to bring good luck, to, to bring reverence to the families. So it's a beautiful holiday, but nobody understood why all these butterflies showed up on November 2nd or right around that time into the central part of Mexico, up into the highlands. Nobody did. And for the same reason, nobody really knew what happened to all the millions of monarchs that were in the Northeast United States, everything east of the Rocky Mountains in the United States, all the monarchs all of a sudden come September, October, just disappeared. And people say, well, did they just die? But you wouldn't see bodies of dead monarchs everywhere. Whereas you saw them flying and all of a sudden they just kind of flew away. Where did they go? Well, you know, I was in high school back in 1976 and one of my favorite publications was National Geographic Magazine. And I'll never forget in August of 1976, picking up the National Geographic Magazine and seeing this on the cover where it says, discovered the monarch's Mexican haven with a photograph of this woman on the cover with thousands of monarch butterflies all over her. And I read that article and it was just absolutely incredible because it told me how they found out that the monarchs were migrating down into Mexico and they were going to this one little spot just in central Mexico up in a place called Michoacan, the state of Michoacan up in over 10,000 feet up into the mountains. And in that city, the little cities around that little mountain area are called Ocampo and different areas are now, they're celebrated throughout Mexico because they brought all this attention to Mexico. Once they realized that these monarchs were going there, it became famous. People wanted to know, why are these monarchs flying there? We wanted to learn more about this incredible, uh, this natural migration, the greatest single migration of any insect on earth. You saw these gift shops established. You saw the new signage go up. They made of biospheres. It became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It became famous. This little tiny mountain area, 10,000 feet above sea level. Look at those pine trees up there. Those pine trees look small in this photograph, but they're not small. They're over 100 feet tall. They're called Oyamel pine trees. And every year, come the end of October, beginning of November, millions and millions of monarch butterflies fly from all over the East United States and land here to winter. Now, this is an incredible story. Why? Let me tell you. Because the generation starts here, right? And they'll start here and they start flying north as the summer goes, heading up into the United States from central Mexico. And they only live about five weeks. That's the average lifespan of a monarch butterfly, five weeks. So they fly north for five weeks and then they lay their eggs and they die. And that generation then hatches out and it flies further north for five weeks, going back up into the central part of the United States, lives for five weeks, lays its eggs and dies. Then the next generation hatches out, flies further north, gets up into the, 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 the northern part of the United States and the southern part of Canada and it lays its eggs and dies. So now we've got three or four generations that have made its way from central Mexico all the way up into southern Canada. This is what the amazing thing is. Folks, I get lost sometimes driving in my own neighborhood. If I don't have GPS on my car telling me where to make a right turn and a left turn, I get lost. How does a bug, a butterfly that weighs less than an ounce fly thousands of miles? over a mile high in the sky many times to get to this place. It's amazing when you think about how nature works. As the sun starts coming up and the heat starts coming out, these butterflies will soon start to uh, wake up. You start seeing their wings start to spread. As the rays of the sun start coming through the trees, you'll see them and they'll start.
they'll start moving up, going up towards the sun. And as they do that, the sun becomes stronger. It becomes stronger. And all of a sudden, if you listen closely, you'll hear, you'll hear, as they start vibrating, they use their wings and they open up and then you start to see the color because when their wings are closed, you know, the, the vibrant color of the monarch is on the inside of the wing. So as they start opening those wings, you start seeing those vibrant oranges and blacks and whites. And you see them close up and they all of a sudden they're shaking everywhere. They're vibrating everywhere. And you see them start to shut around and, and walk towards the sun, trying to get as much light as they can. They'll open their wings and they use them as solar panels grabbing in all that heat, storing all the heat they can. And then all of a sudden, once the temperature reaches 60 degrees, you look up and thousands of butterflies take off. They're flying up in the trees and it's just amazing. There's literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of butterflies flying over you. The entire forest becomes full of light. It's like an enchanted forest. If you've watched Peter Pan or, or Disney World, you've seen Tinkerbell flying around. It's like a million Tinkerbells are flying all over the forest. And what they do is they come right down to the, to the plants on the ground. They've got to refuel. They've got to refuel because that night, it's going to get cold again. It's going to get cold again. So they've got to get as much fuel as they can. They come down to the plants. They get as much nectar as they can into, the, into their body system. You see these butterflies everywhere you look. There's butterflies on every flower. They're landing on you. They're landing on the flowers. They're landing on the leaves. It's one of the most amazing feats of nature I have ever experienced in my life. I have been watching, you know, the whales migrate through the Atlantic. I've watched the, 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 the wildebeest migrate in Africa. I've watched the great migrations of, of all kinds of animals but I've never in my life witnessed anything quite like this. To be surrounded by millions of butterflies all over the place, feeding on, flown in many cases, thousands of miles. To see that incredible feat being accomplished by these animals. Everywhere you look, there were butterflies coming to life. They were grabbing on every surface, grabbing every piece of fuel they could get. It was just phenomenal to watch. I, I cannot say enough about what an extraordinary event to see these butterflies coming down. And then the public, would be allowed in. And when the public comes in, they walk amongst the butterflies and the butterflies are flying everywhere. You get to observe this incredible miracle of nature because fortunately the, Me the Mexican government has understood the importance of these butterflies. You know, folks, butterflies are not important just because they're beautiful to look at. They do represent a, a beauty of the forest, a beauty of the environment, but they also play a very important role in our environment. Butterflies are important pollinators. Without these pollinators, we have butterflies, bats, bees. These are important pollinators in our world. Without those pollinators, ecosystems could collapse. We could lose so many species of plants. We lose biodiversity. Biodiversity is what keeps our, our environment healthy. And butterflies play a crucial role in that. We need these butterflies to migrate, to do this pollinating from plant to plant so that these environments can continue to thrive and continue to, to succeed. So as you walk through the sanctuary, patrons are asked to just stay on, on certain paths so that they don't disturb the butterflies. You have to be careful where you're stepping because many butterflies just land on the floor in front of you. So it's incredible and people taking pictures surrounded by butterflies. But remember what I told you about the, the belief of the Day of the Dead of Mexicans. It's not a scary holiday like our Halloween is. The Day of the Dead is again a celebration. It's a celebration because all of these people here believe that these butterflies represent the spirits of their long, long lost ancestors, their grandfathers, their great, great grandparents, their great, great grandparents, their uncles, anybody who has died in their past has come back in the form of this butterfly. So to them, this is a huge celebration. The butterflies are a beautiful reminder of their families. Nothing could be a greater gift to any of these families than if a butterfly lands on you. That is one of the greatest signs of good luck, one of the greatest endorsements that a family member is looking out for you. So this next photograph I'm gonna show you, there were these two sisters and one of them had her baby daughter with her and a butterfly landed on its head. And I'll never forget it, they just, their eyes opened so widely and they smile so big. And I took the photograph and I asked them, I said, why is this such a wonderful thing for you? And she told me that their father had passed away two months before and she firmly believed that that butterfly was the spirit of their father coming to bless the granddaughter that he never got to see in real life. So it's a beautiful tradition that the Mexican people have. It's a beautiful representation that the butterflies have for the Mexican people. It really is 
beyond words, my pictures don't do any justice to what it's like to be in this enchanted forest surrounded by literally millions of butterflies that have traveled across a continent to, to continue this circle of life that is so amazing, especially for an invertebrate, for an insect to do this. Now, everything that lives, folks, must one day die. And on the floor of the forest, you will see thousands and thousands and thousands of dead butterflies. And it's really incredible to see them throughout the forest floor. Um, I mean, I cannot tell you, as far as you can see, you will see these butterflies just carpeting, carpeting the floor. But I was out, as I was looking at the butterflies, I noticed something that caught my eye. This butterfly, it had a tag on it, which was incredible because the reason why we know about the miracle of the migration of the monarch butterflies is because of citizen science. A, a program called Monarch Watch, which was established way back, there was a, 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 a zoology named Dr. Urquhart from Canada, who devised a way to put tags on butterflies that would not uh, hinder their flight. It would not affect their everyday life. And what he did was he put tags on them with numbers so that if people found the butterfly with a tag, they can call the number and they could give the tag number and learn where that butterfly was. And that's how they learned. They would tag a butterfly in Southern Canada that they would find in Mexico and say, my goodness, this butterfly traveled all the way to Mexico from Southern Canada where we got the tag. This particular butterfly that I found, that tag number corresponded with the butterfly and told me that that particular butterfly had been tagged in Michigan, in the Northern United States. This butterfly had flown over a thousand miles from Michigan down into central Mexico, laid its eggs and died there. What a tremendous, incredible feeling that was for me to hold in my hand this beautiful, beautiful insect that had made this epic journey in this wonderful story of the migration of the monarchs. Now you see throughout the reserve in the sanctuary, there's all kinds of signs and we'd be watching these signs and all of a sudden I noticed that these butterflies like right around noon, at the heat of the day, they all started funneling down down a ravine. That's my son there as we're doing the documentary. And he goes, Dad, look, they're going all down into the ravine. Why are they doing that? Why are all these butterflies going down to the ravine? So we started to follow them. And as we followed them, we learned very quickly why they were going down into the ravine. They were going down to the creek. They were going down to drink. I got down on my belly there. This is the creek bed. It's all soaked with water. And you have thousands and thousands of butterflies. I'm there with my camera laying on my belly, looking as far as the eye can see. This is what I'm seeing. Thousands and thousands and thousands of monarch butterflies getting a drink. It's just an absolute incredible sight to see. I cannot begin to tell you what an amazing thing it was for as far as the eyes can see. You see these butterflies coming down and drinking. Some of them getting caught up, caught up in the water and they don't